amazing, iconic, legendary guitar player, Steve Vai, my favorite guitar player. So, hey, I can say that. And um, it's it's. I've been, it's been a while. I've been tr- I've been beating up Jason to get get you on the show for a while. He's uh he's uh he's been very patient with me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad but I'm very it. happy to be here with you guys. I think what you're doing is fabulous and very timely and uh, appropriate and vital for a lot of people. So right on. Yeah, it's 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 a tough time for especially artists and really everyone right now. You know, like mm. it's it's the the coronavirus is like. It's shutting down everything. It's it's um, you know people's money is going in the you know they they're running out of money, they're running out of uh, resources. People are dying, getting sick. You know it's it's a tough time out there. But yeah, <clears throat> you know like how how are you uh, how are you holding up out there in the, in the music industry right now with with all this stuff? Well, it's very obvious that some of my friends and you know uh, many great musicians. Uh, had to had to cancel their tours, which is uh, you know that's uh, quite a blow, especially when your economics are based on uh, things like touring and releasing records and promotion, and all of this has been a little crippled. But there's also the good news, I guess, is um, there's also musicians that function or people that function in the music business that are actually doing still doing okay and some even thriving. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, I read a report this morning, I should find it and and, uh, maybe I'll look for it in a little while, that in the UK, guitar sales have spiked tremendously and uh, because people are home now. And uh, one of the things that I've discovered that most people love to do as a secret passion or a guilty pleasure is play the guitar. And they don't get they don't get much of a chance because they're busy lives. So after they've accepted the uh, the detrimental uh, effects that this virus may be having or or may not be having on their uh, livelihood, they can sit down and play the guitar, <laughs> and the sales are skyrocketing. Also, for myself. Um, I'm very fortunate, you know, in this situation because I didn't have any tours planned. I had, um, well, I have, I still have, it's still on the books, a a a recording uh, orchestral sessions in Europe. Uh, I've got like four hours of orchestra music that's been, I've been wanting to record and I've been planning this for about two years and working on it. And uh, right now we're just scheduled to go into the studio in, uh, Holland with the Metropole Orchestra in the end of May. And then in June, the first few weeks of June, I'm with the Aarhus Denmark Radio Orchestra. And that might get canceled. I don't know, but it's fine. You know, uh, I I sit home in my studio and work and many musicians are are just finding different ways to express themselves creatively, whether it's uh, disrupt it's di- if it's very disruptive in their life because of their planned schedule it's an opportunity to realize that plans can change at any time and you you your ability to move forward productively and creatively is going to be joined at the hip with your attitude about your need to change so for instance one attitude might right. one attitude might be Oh no, this sucks. Everything's going to hell. Now I'm I'm done. What am I going to do about all these plans that I have, the tour and the finances? And 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 this is all projection into a future that uh, is just not uh, in the cards right now. But um, another way to approach it is okay. Well, things are changing. They always change, and how can I use this time creatively, enjoyably? You know, obviously this is uh, for people that aren't actually, all right, uh, that aren't actually suffering from the disease itself. You know, people that are home practicing, they're distancing. The most, uh, um, I think the most vital thing in this entire pandemic, probably the most dangerous thing, is not actually the virus, but it's the fear 
that's engendered by the virus, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Because, yeah, because that, when people are in fear, the decisions they make and the words they say and the actions they take are reflective of that. So any ideas or uh, that you have in a state of fear are gonna be corrupted in a sense. So it's, it's kind of important to uh, see in yourself if that's the case, you know, if there's the, the fear about things as opposed to being conscientious. You know, there's a difference between uh, following protocol, being conscientious, doing the things that uh, are expected of us to do our best to retain this situation and uh, to abolish it. And that doesn't really require fear, you know? It just requires some simple common sense maneuvering. And uh, so, yeah, everybody has to kind of find their comfort zone and their way to use this time effectively and creatively. Uh, Steve, yeah, I, go you, ahead, Mike. Well, you know, Steve, I know that, you know, you're, you know, a master composer and that's, that's a huge love of yours. So. I mean, obviously everyone's got some level of fear of this thing, but did you have any special projects or did you have any special, you know, kind of mental state uh, that you would come into to, to calm down and say, I'm going to, I'm going to use my energy for, you know, for good and creativity rather than worrying about if I'm going to get this or if I, I can't tour or blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a, a that's that includes the, uh, some psychological gymnastics on your you know on your part, and one of the things I think to keep in mind is um, change. Change can be good. That's that's an attitude. Now, for me to say something like that at this time can be controversial, because. If somebody's in fear and they hear something like that, change can be good. There's every kind of defense against change. But, but the realization that change is constant and has been, and this is going to introduce a dramatic change in, um, in the way we work, the way we communicate, the way we create, the way we... Um, uh, address ourselves, you know, in, in our own minds. So uh, I think embracing the, the, the attitude that change can be good, you know, and finding, because if that is all of a sudden your attitude, you will, you will be looking for that in the world and you will find it because you're always going to find what you're looking for. If you're looking for fearful things, you're going to find it. If you're, if you're looking, you're, that, then you'll be tuning into um, conspiracy theory type uh, web pages and <laughs> right. you know, these kinds of things. You, that's fear. Uh, you, you're, attra you're attracting it. You're doing it, you know. And mm -hmm. when you change your perspective and soften up and, 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 and just kind of relax into it, then, then you have access to more positive feeling thoughts about the situation. And then you start seeing those and boy, oh boy, there's plenty of that out there. There's tremendous amounts of positive uh, things that you can find the way people are reaching out and helping each other, you know, what we're doing right now, you know, all these yeah. things, um, you know, and, uh, and also nature keeps a balance somehow, you know, it always has. The planet has an intelligence that keeps it itself in balance. And we believe that we're destroying the planet, but you can't destroy the planet. It's going to figure it out. You know, no matter, we can deplete it of all of its resources, but th those resources aren't going anyplace because the planet itself will just, you know, do what it's been doing for billions of years, you know, or however long. But we can destroy ourselves. <laughs> You know, or we can we can um, make well, not we can you know, but we can also use this as an opportunity for a deeper level of conscientiousness in all the things we do. So the choice is really ours. You know, the the, the depletion of resources that the that the planet balances 
our only resources that we're depleting for ourselves. The planet, the planet doesn't care about those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, let me ask you this. You know, like a lot of people use the mainstream media, like, you know, CNN, Fox News, as a source of information about public safety, local TV stations. But when it's a it's a it's a pay for view industry, when it's a for profit media, they know that we are afraid right now. And and it can we can be exploited as as the human race by the media to kind of lure us into paying attention to all this fear and it's like how do you how do you get good information out there like when you know you're you, you know things are going wrong but you're and you want to tune in but you also need to control yourself control your own fear like how do you how do you balance that it's an inside job. You have to do it yourself first. And then the things that you're attracted to in the world that you get your news from will be in line with where you're resonating. So for instance, if you're, uh, fear is insidious, okay? It lurks in the background and it's all ego and it's an illusion in reality, <laughs> but we believe it. So trying to discover uh, a, an information source that will bring you proper information, up-to-date information, uh, vital information that helps you to uh, ma make your plans or know what, what the protocols are or where to go if you get sick or all these things. This, this is good information to have and it's good information to know. And you will know when your receipt, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a paradox. It's kind of like a catch 22, because if you're in a state of fear, what, what's going to happen to my finances? What's going to happen? This, this is the end of me. You know, what the, 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 the mind's just going to create all these, um, uh, commentaries about something that you really about and, and there, there you'll notice that the commentary the mind is creating is usually about some future event that hasn't happened and right. so if you're in that state when you go online to find information you may find yourself being attracted to uh, fearful information and there's plenty of that out there there's plenty of that out there and you can find it in droves and the news stations, you have to learn how to read between the lines, balance the uh, information you're getting with some real centered equi uh, uh, equal with a centered equilibrium and um, put the pieces together. But I would suggest that, uh, I, I mean, I could tell you what I've been watching and um, just to get, you know, just to be up to date because it's very attractive to go uh, get lost in these websites that are all very fear based and uh, uh, and, the, and, and it's hard not to because the mind says, yeah, but this is true. This can really happen. We can all go to hell in a handbag. Mm -hmm. I can, I, if I go out and I breathe the air, it could have the, you know, so the, the, this is a, it's a, it's unnecessary concern. It's like a, it verges on paranoia, you know? So you have to kind of check yourself and, and just try to, be practical about the protocols and if you find your and this is a hard one this is a real hard one if you find yourself delving deep into fearful websites to get your information and find yourself at the bottom of a pit of conspiracy and all of these kinds of things um you're doing yourself a great disservice Mm -hmm. And you're not helping yourself. You're not helping the other. You're not helping others. And the difficult thing is you will hear your mind say, no, this is true. This is true. The, the, the government is doing it or uh, this was planned so that somebody can take over the world. Uh, you know, the, the, these things. Uh, and even now, with, there's people saying, you just don't understand what's happening, Vi. You know, 
Maybe I don't. That's not on my radar. I don't buy into it. It doesn't affect my life. And but and, yeah. So go on. Well, even even I was gonna say, even if you even if it is true, you still are gonna have to take care of yourself. Yes. Even if it is a conspiracy, you're still gonna have to navigate your own boat through these choppy waters. Yeah. And it's like it, and so as if you're gonna be the captain of your boat and not sink this sucker, your own boat, you know, you're gonna have to like have courage and and to have courage to get through this you you got to feed the courage and i i was just say it's kind of like being a guitar player <laughs> like yeah. and a musician you know like you you've put yourself out there to me as a guitar player you're one of the most charismatic emotionally flamboyant like performers with, with your art and uh, you know you really turned playing the guitar into an art form and I, and I, I love that about you. And, you know, but it's, it takes courage to do that. And it takes courage to put yourself at risk and put yourself out there to criticism and, and, and kind of be the master of your own, your own art. And, and, but I think it's kind of a similar principle, you know, what do you, what do you think about that? Well, uh, it's a very good point. Um, courage, that that's a uh, it's an interesting point i think for some people it may take courage but for most people they don't have a choice uh, like myself i know how weird i can be <laughs> you know i see it i you know and but i can't help it i i don't want to help it it's natural to me and when you find your natural expression life is good with, with no excuses you know, and it took me years to accept myself in a way. I'm being honest. I don't have any other choice but to be totally honest with you. I would find myself being attracted to doing things, ideas, uh, guitars, whatever it is that would come on the radar. And I said, oh, that's a good idea. You know, that, I like that, you know, and that right there, that feeling right there. That's your best guidance. Because when a when an idea comes to you that that feels exciting and natural, that that it's coming from a part of you that's organic for you, you know, and it might show up in the world uh, for someone like myself, making funny faces when I play, or you know, uh, wearing a certain type of clothes, picking certain notes, looking for little delicacies in the melodies. You know, this is like really exciting to me. And then you put it out in the world. It's not conventional. It's not what is usually accepted. And, but what are you going to do? There, uh, luckily, the, the, uh, there's an audience for it because there's an, there's an honesty in it. Yeah, you know? it's genuine. Yeah, so, so the people that respond to that kind of thing, it sounds like you might be one of them. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, th it's, <laughs> good, it, it's good for them, you know? Now, as the artist... You have to find an acceptance in exactly where you are right now <laughs> in your career. And I'm here to tell you that where you are right now in your creative process is fine. It's right on, it's right on time. Mm -hmm. the, 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 when, when, it, when you say it takes courage for these people to do this, I don't believe that it took David Bowie or Prince or Michael Jackson courage. They had no choice. Fra Frank Zappa, that, I, don't, I don't believe, I've never saw, I never would equate what he did as requiring courage because for him it was like, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm doing. If anybody asks, this is what I'm doing. And by the way, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it didn't. Re he wasn't going like I might not be accepted though. I better girdle up my loins and be courageous and be myself. When you feel like you have to take have courage to be yourself, something is amiss. Yeah, well, I was in the military twenty years, and that so I'm I'm coming out of that all of that training, and now I'm trying to become my true self. Like I was kind of playing an, a role for 20 years and now at this point I'm, I guess that's probably why I thought of courage cuz it's taken courage for, to like 
to leave that behind and do uh, my own thing and be as the as most the most Matt Gibson as I can possibly be, you know. And the show mm -hmm. is part of doing that, you know. Yeah. Well, Matt Gibson decided to join the military at some point. Right. That was a clear cut decision because Matt Gibson had a pull, and there was something in him that was attractive. Uh, uh, there was that, that was attracting him to the military. Yep. Now that was your inner being because you wouldn't have done it if you didn't have an, as much of uh, enough of a pull. Sure. So you stayed in it for 20 years. So there must have been something that you were finding fulfillment in and finding value at. You don't need to leave any of that. You can, it, it, it's, it, it helped to build something in you. That whole experience of the 20 years in the military was vi vital, valuable experience on various levels. So that's a perspective. And if you have that perspective, there's no need to find courage to leave it behind. You, you, you'll embrace it and incorporate it and feel good about it and use it today with the decisions that you're making today for the things that have a pull in you today. So you can, you have the opportunity to completely release yourself from any um, aspect, from any feelings like, of any feelings of resistance in anything that, any decisions you made while in the military, because they all were important to bring you to where you are right now. So when you're friendly with your past, your past becomes really friendly to you mm -hmm. in your now. That's great. And That's what's the speech. option? Yeah. What is the option? <laughs> right. Well, I think sometimes, <laughs> I think sometimes, you know, when when I was dealing with guitar players for 20 years, a guitar player, there was always that rating yourself with whatever else is going on. It's the music business thing. So kind of to Matt's point, I can see where the fear factor enters in there. Am I going to sell enough records? Am I going to get enough of an audience? And, and, uh, but to your point, uh, you know, Neil Finn, a crowded house, once told me, uh, you know, all that stuff you hate about your songwriting that's too weird and you're never going to get a, a song cut. All that stuff is the real you and you should celebrate that. Just kind of like what you're saying. And uh, and I think that when I have run into artists such as yourself, you know, I mean, you'd, you'd be doing this, Steve, if you were playing for 50 bucks a night at a bar or, or a millionaire. You know, you, you like you said, you have no choice. This is what you're going to do. So. Yeah. Um, thank goodness you've been able to find an awesome career about it because we've all had the benefit of that because we've been able to get all, we've been able to you know, take in your artistry. But um, that yeah. authenticity, just following your heart, I, I think is huge, especially now. Well, th well, thank you, and and you have been very helpful in all that. You were an incredibly cooperative component in my career uh, for all that you did for me in the past you know, when I was coming through the ranks. You, you also scared me into it because I remember meeting you for the first time at the uh, <laughs> uh, Crossroads, uh, crossroads thing at, uh, uh, in Dallas. And hey, I, I recognize you, you know, across, you were up in the upper bar or something. I was like, oh, I think that's Steve Bai. I should say hi since I'm the editor of the guitar player now. And you shook hands were very nice, but said, so you're the guy who hasn't put me on the cover in the last 20 years, something like that. <laughs> what a prick. <laughs> so we, have to, we have to solve that right away. But, you know, but giving it back to you, not, not to make this a, a hug fest, but, you know, there's, there's certain artists out there in my journalism career who have been, and, and you're doing it today in this podcast, which I think is awesome, but, you know, you're not protective or egotistical. You know, you were willing to share every part of your artistry with, uh, the readers of Guitar Player magazine. And, you know, it's not rare, but it's not every day that I meet artists who have been successful, who are willing to be as sharing and as open as as you've been. You know, even that time where, you know, at that cover story I did with you where you said, you know, the, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase, so I'm probably going to get it wrong, so feel free to correct me, but, you know, the composition aspect is more important. That's more of my life to be an awesome composer been an amazing guitar player. And I mean, that kicked the ass of so many guitar player readers who were just thinking, okay, it's all about technique. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, Steve Vai said it's all about 
composition, you know. <laughs> I mean, that was incredible. I think that was incredibly helpful to a huge uh, community of players who now, if they, you know, if they love you and love what you're doing, it's like, well, maybe it's not about how fast I'm playing. Maybe I should figure out how to get a good melody going, you know. Well, uh, when I had said it's all about composition, that was for me, basically. But uh, mm -hmm. everybody needs to kind of find what it is for them. Uh, but melody is king. You know, uh, melody uh, is always the thing that beats and grooves and and production that that can work very nicely and that can be really um, attractive. But melody is the thing that gives is the, the music that you know the foundation. So, mm -hmm. and composition for me was always uh, just interesting. You know, just exciting and an incredible expression that's nothing like the guitar but my love for the guitar is profound it always has been but i'd like to get back to your uh, what we were talking about uh about finding yourself mm -hmm. you know f finding uh your natural quirky uh self and embracing it because what that quote that you just uh, mentioned that uh can you say that again you were oh, for, for Neil. Yeah. Yeah. It's just all, well, I mean, it was basically all the stuff that you hate about your own writing and playing is actually you, the real you. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's yeah. so brilliant. And so right. it's quite profound. So let me kind of ex extrapolate a little bit on that. Because I, I know I know this because I've felt that way uh, at times, you know, I've, I've, in the past. All those the perspective of all those mistakes and all the things that you you feel are wrong about you is the it's the it's an egoic kind of perspective that feels that it needs to fall into line that it needs to fit in that it mm -hmm. needs to be the same as that it need or else and then the, and then the the mind it gets a hold of that and it says because if you don't your, your economics your your acceptance by others uh, all mm -hmm. these things uh, are compromised they're going to be compromised this is a lie right that, this is a lie that the mind tells you what's actually happening because the ego doesn't when it looks back at those quirky things like what i uh, it, 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 there were times where i'd look back at what i wore in the 80s and just go, oh, <laughs> oh my God, what an idiot. Look at that. Why did you do that? Why are you acting like that? You know, why are you moving like that sequin pants? You know, and then I realized at the time that was who I was. And that was, it was very enjoyable at the time, you know? So, so accepting uh, your own quirky self can be difficult, but the only obstruction is ever your own thoughts about yourself in your own head <laughs> and remove having removing those thoughts is freedom because there is nothing more comfortable there's nothing more satisfying in your life than uh, being comfortable in your skin with exactly who you are without any excuses I i'm great except this is wrong with me and this so there's one one thing that i could uh, i would say that i i just read recently or i came across it that was very powerful and i want to share it and i believe it i i totally believe this the most powerful thing that you can do in your life to release yourself from resistance and and to enjoy uh, in, enjoy your world, enjoy your creativity, enjoy the co-creative things that you do with others, which is always happening, uh, is to simply be friendly with yourself. Mm. You know, be, be friendly with yourself. Uh, uh, when you look at, if, if you're looking back at all those mistakes, mm -hmm. you see them, at, you see that you can, you, if you're being friendly with yourself, you say, well, that's what was happening at the time. And, and those mistakes were very valuable. If you, if you look back, the, the evidence of what I'm saying here is, can be seen if you look back at your 
career or, or your life and examine the real challenging times where your judgment was saying, this is bad. <laughs> and then look at the uh, effects of it, the repercussions of it, and how valuable those repercussions actually were in in your awareness, in the growth of your own uh, mental health, or or the the mm -hmm. expansion of your your uh, where they led you for your career, you'll you'll notice if you're centered enough that everything happens. Everything that happens for you is in your best interest. Now that's a perspective. Just like saying. Everything I do never works out. That there, there are two. You you have the you have the right to choose any one of these, and whatever you choose and you start believing, that will become your reality in the world, because that's that's what you're looking for. It's your your mental attitude. So this is what I've kind of worked on my whole life, and it's really nice. <laughs> It's, it's yeah. really good to be friendly with yourself, you know, because when you do that, then you, you're friendly with others too. Now the well, ego, I'm definitely, yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Steve. I was going to say the ego yeah. is going to fight you on this every step of the way, because it believes that by being friendly with yourself or others or showing appreciation and doing these things, you have to give something up. You have to sacrifice something like your strength. You know, it says, if you don't worry about this, the wheels are going to fall off. If you can't figure out all of the things that could happen in this terrible event that you're making up in your mind for the future, mm -hmm. then you're fucked. You know, you're just, you're not, the wheels are going to fall off. It says things to you like, if you don't worry about this, you're not being responsible. <laughs> right. This well, is I, a lie. Yeah, that's true. And, and I mean, I think sometimes, like you said, the ego and circumstances, Enter in. I mean, I, I met uh, a reasonably famous guitar player who was playing like 500 seat clubs, you know, and, and pretty much filling them. But when I went to talk to him and interview him, it's like it was it was all like a drag. He was not liking himself. It's I think I'm good enough to fill stadiums. I can't figure out why I'm not there. I'm like really pissed off that I, I'm not more successful than I am. And I just said, well, from my perspective, just to sit, let this sink in. I'm watching you fill a 500 seat club and people are losing their minds. So isn't that a good thing? You know, shouldn't you savor and celebrate that? Because a lot of people in the world don't even have that. I mean, you're blessed in a certain way to be able to make that many people happy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, that's a very good example of, and, and this is not uncommon and I've felt it of, accepting and being friendly with where you're at as being the right thing for you and finding appreciation in where you're at selling out 500 seat theaters or clubs is not a bad thing it's it's it it's much more than a lot of people could hope for uh, you know and but it will never be enough for the ego if he's playing, if, if a person is playing 500 seat theaters and they say, why aren't I in arenas? I will virtually guarantee you that if they got to arenas, they'd be saying, why aren't I in stadiums? And the moment, the moment that, that the moment that they see somebody else in a stadium, that, that, that drives, drives the pain home. Yeah. Drives the suffering home it's no it doesn't end okay so it's never there's never enough for the ego there's never enough awards there's never enough magazine covers there's never enough ticket sales there's never enough accolades there's never enough um uh, grammys there's never enough money and it's always a projection into a fantasy future that they believe once they have these things the recognition once everybody knows how great they really are then they'll be happy. <laughs> this is this is a lie. And yeah, I, and you can take it from me. I have all those things, and and they're nice, but they come with challenges. And I can and and, and I could see how 
through my career, those challenges, some, they're mental, you know, and they, 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 they come in and they cause suffering and it does not matter what you have. It will never be enough for the ego. So the, 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 the practice, the, the very helpful practice, and this is again, the most powerful thing you can do for yourself in your, for your life and all the people in your life and for, for the world basically is to appreciate what you have right now. <laughs> Just be be happy with what you have and cho choose what you what's in your life now as if you chose it for yourself. You know, if you can appreciate 500 seat theaters and, and just enjoy, you know, enjoy it. Just when a thousand seat theater comes along, it's gravy. It's the, the, there's more appreciation. Right. And then you'd be shocked because when there's no resistance, when there's a releasing of resistance, all these things start happening. Yeah, I, I've noticed that just with the show, like do, I, I rebooted the show. And, you know, when this COVID crisis, you know, kicked off, you know, everyone's panicking, you know, what are we going to do? And I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get to know everyone in the entertainment business. <laughs> like, I'm just going to reach out to everybody that I know and just build friendships and relationships with people and hang out and talk and learn and grow. And I mean, this is a great time to like, take care of yourself. Yeah. This is a great time to take care of yourself. And I, one thing I wanted to say too about what you're talking about, Steve, is, you know, kind of another a side thing on what you're talking about is gratitude. Is that being thankful right now for what you have? Yeah. And 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 it's kind of like that. Are you focusing on what you don't have, or are you focusing on what you do have? And you know, like I I do find that that you know I'm just kind of like at peace with myself right now. And all these things are happening. Everything's flowing. The show's growing. I'm making great friends. I'm playing music. I I just moved to LA in September from Virginia. So I'm I'm here to try to wow. do the whole music thing and and make it happen. You know, 49 years old, getting started, right? So you know, it's like, but it's it's so cool when you when you when you relax, like you're saying. You, I've been writing in my journal like all the things that I'm the biggest dreams that I can think of mm -hmm. every day. I write them in my journal and I'm just trying to like expand my mind and take away my fear and just all the things, like you're saying, all the things about me that I've been kind of like giving myself a hard time about, I've just been amplifying them. Yeah. I'm just going to, I've just been like giving myself permission to be that way. And it, and it has, it's changed. It's changing my life day by day and it's getting cooler and cooler and I, uh, I really appreciate what you were just talking about because it's I'm experiencing it right now in my life, and and it, and I can validate it for sure. Well, that's fantastic, and it's time. It's yeah. time. For, it's time for you. And uh, one one of the things that happens when you change, you 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 become helpful in a more powerful way for others. Do you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you're, when you're, when you're, when you're more satisfied, listen, no one is ever going to be, is be able to escape being themselves. Who you are in your uniqueness is beautiful and brilliant. And you don't even have to believe that for it to be true. <laughs> it just is. You just don't realize it uh, because of the ego. It's never nothing about you is ever going to be good enough for your ego, but who you really are is perfect. And when you embrace that, you release so much bullshit, you become comfortable in your skin, you become a, a better friend, a better a, a mother, a better father, a better mm -hmm. worker, a better co worker. You know, it just, it just, that's the natural effect of accepting yourself for who you are. And here's a, here's something that that happens that's quite a miracle also. When you start accepting yourself for who you are, you accept others for who they are. Yeah. You you allow other people to be themselves without it disturbing you. Right. <laughs> you it, 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 you don't feel the need to change to make somebody else happy. That's hell. 
and you'll never be able to do it. Yeah, right. Because, because you when you do that, you're compromising your your sense of freedom. Your your sense of freedom is joined at the hip with your ability to be yourself in a full, enjoyable, uh, no excuse kind of a way. And uh, w once you start finding that, uh, you become a, you you allow others to find it in themselves. So you're not critic. You're not mm -hmm. so critical of others. You're not, right. you're, you're not saying you should be different so that I can be happy. Do, do you even hear <laughs> right. how, can you hear how fucked up that is? Yeah. But, but we do it all the time. Yeah. You, you know, you shouldn't be wearing that. You shouldn't play that music. You, you should have. And another one is you should have done this. You could have done this, you mm -hmm. know, by pointing at, at blame. If you find yourself giving blame or criticism, you haven't found yourself because blame and criticism is always a reflection of the person that's giving it. The criticism, yeah. the criticism you hear somebody say, they're only ever talking about themselves. Yep. That kind really. of, uh, Greg, uh, Greg Kennan uh, has asked, uh, you know, it's hard enough to manage a band with divas, had Steve do with four of the world class musicians, but I think you kind of just answered that. So hopefully Greg took that in. I mean, I'm assuming how you manage your bands and your uh, collaborators is just what you said, that you allow them to be who they are. And hopefully there's no clashes of egos or, or divinness going on in your projects. Yeah, it's an inside job. You have to change yourself first. That's the, that's the thing that's so difficult to understand. You have to change yourself before you can even attract people into your life that you can just trust, you know? And, and, and yes, the, the, the most um, wonderful working environment is when you have people that you know you can just delegate and they're on it, they got it, you know? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the, the, uh, I, I'm so fortunate, there's people in my, field of, of work, my engineer, Greg, you know, bulletproof. I mean, I can't do, I, you know, I'd be shot in the foot, man, without someone like Greg, you know, he knows the, stu he knows everything, all the new gear, he gets it and, you know, and setting things up, my, he, he just like, and he's got it. So very and my sister Pam, who has uh, <clears throat> been my bookkeeper and assistant for 25 years, bulletproof man, bulletproof. So you definitely want to feel like you can delegate. But here's here's the thing. Okay, the best way to delegate is to people who love what they're doing. You know, people that find. Because we're all working together. Every everybody is working together. You can't do anything without anybody else. We could not have this conversation if it wasn't for <laughs> technology. So it, where do you find the beginning of that? I mean, it's, you know, you have to you have to take every little thing back to the Big Bang theory, you know, to figure it out where it came from. So we're kind of working together, and when you are working with people that their 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 note so to speak is let's say it's engineering let's say it's producing let's say it's songwriting let's say it's music attorney let's say uh, it's a manager an agent i mean the music business is vast and there's a tremendous amount of uh people that uh that found their found their nut you know like for instance i went to berkeley and I met a lot of people. And if, you, if you're a young musician and you're going to a music school, just remember that a lot of the people you're sitting with, you'll know for the rest of your life through the business and through the career. But one of the things I notice is a lot of people have a tendency when they're young to know that they love music and they, they may pick up an instrument. And then I, I met many of them at Berkeley. Some of them could play incredibly well and they were obviously, uh, you know, aspiring great guitar players, but there was others that weren't quite sure but they knew they loved music. And then once they started to see the vast uh, positions in the music business, sometimes something, something would go, oh, I, I get engineering, you know? A matter of fact, 
I think I like engineering more than playing the guitar or being a composer. So when you work with people that, um, that genuinely love what they're doing and don't want to be doing something else, like if you're working with a, uh, I don't know, a, a bass player that actually wants to be a drummer, or an attorney that actually wants to be a rock star, you know, you, 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 chances are you're going to be better off with people that have found their calling. So those mm -hmm. are very good people to delegate to because they love what they're doing and they, they want to do the best. It's not like they're, they feel like they're in a position where they, you know, by your decree, they have to do great they're not going to do anything else but the best that they can do because they have no choice. Right. Yeah. yeah and those never, are the, you know, ran into that even just at the magazines I managed, you know, music uh, writers would get in there thinking it was a, a free way to being an awesome, famous musician, you know, and it's like, well, it's hard to say to those people, well, maybe you're just an awesome writer, you know, who can also play well. But as you said that, you know, the, the desire to be a musician might have outstripped the fact that they're actually an, an editor in a magazine right now. Maybe, and, maybe and, it's and there was maybe, kinda, there would be some kind of there'd always be some kind of thing about that, you know. Yeah, and that's 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 requires incredible vigilance and vigilance in your own mind to be able to see what your ego is telling you, and what your natural desires, your actual organic natural desires. And there's a couple of ways that you can, a couple of things you can look for in that. Uh, so for instance, if you find yourself, let's say you're a writer, a music writer, but secretly you really have a passion to be a, a musician. Um, when you're writing, how do you feel? You know, is there a struggle in it? Is there a, um, uh, a complaining in it, in your mind? Is there, is there an impatience? Do you feel impatience? If, if you're feeling any of these things with anything that you're doing, you need to know that that's your ego complaining that you're not so, so, so much more. So much more. You need to be right. more. More on a perverse level, though, not... I'm not talking about on a natural evolutionary of your own craft level. But if when you find the th when you find yourself doing something and there's an enjoyment to this, it's just simple, there's no fear, there's no thoughts about expectations of the future about it. There's no feeling like you have to accomplish this in order to be accepted and approved by anybody. If there's there's if there's none of that. Then there's the simple enjoyment and pa of what you're doing, and everybody does this for something in their life. Even the most unconscious people might pick up a, might just find that bliss when they're cooking. Yeah. You know what I mean, or something, or when they're making any little thing. It doesn't have to. Be. People believe that what they contribute to the world has to be gargantuan in order to ha be validated this is an ins this is insanity because it's not true it's simply not true maybe it's the <laughs> labels maybe it's the labels like like i used to want to think of myself as a guitar player who is a famous rock star right like when i was younger that was the dream right yeah and, and i still throw around the term rock star i mean it's kingdom of rock here you know it's kind of that's still kind of the spirit behind being the best you that you can be. But I'm finding that when I quit with the labels, like, like, do you consider yourself a guitarist or are you a Steve Vai? Like, like, is it, is it a, like, I, I'm considering myself a Matt Gibson. And if I'm playing the guitar at that moment, I'm a guitarist, but it's kind of like, I'm just on a stage and I'm doing my thing at that moment and that's my i want to get as much into that as i can possibly be if i'm cooking i'm a cook you know like if i'm if i'm you know being romantic i'm a i'm a you know casanova whatever You're it is a love you know? maker 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so like it's 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 all I think it's about because we, we always seem to want to go into the future or into the past. Yeah. And 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 it's like the future we're like not happy with what we have, you know, the past we're like sad because we did all this stuff. And it's like if or or maybe we did we were successful in the past and we're unhappy because we're not successful now in the same way we, we were then because we're older, body doesn't work the same, whatever. But like if you can just be the best you right now mm. in this moment, that's how you change the world. That's Absolutely. the theory that I'm operating with right yeah. now. Well, your world changes. The world you perceive changes, and that's how you change the world. And the, the secret to finding that is giving your attention to the present moment. All It's all that there is. And what that means, and this is something uh, uh, through my spiritual studies, I've come across some really wonderful, amazing, powerful teachers. <clears throat> and any everything I'm saying is it just comes from them. But it kind of makes sense to me. So when you give your attention to the present moment, there's no thoughts about the future or the past. And if you notice, your thoughts about the future or the past, which are illusory because they're just thoughts in your head now, mm. um, they are uh, pretty much untrue, you know, uh, because they're, they're conditioned. They're conditioned by... Uh, They've been conditioned since you were born, actually, and they create a perspective in you. And that perspective has judgments about the future and criticisms about the past. And this is what suffering is. So you're absolutely correct. In order to find yourself, who you really are, your, your, your bliss, your ultra zone, as I call it, mm -hmm. you have to become present. <clears throat> your only security is in the now your only sense of security will be in your now because the only thing that will ever cause stress in your life are the thoughts in your head about the future or the past, which aren't true, you know? Right. So, yeah. And, right. And, wow. And, this, and stress, the evolution of stress is depression. And stress, people believe that stress is caused in them by things in the outside world. This is very obvious when you see people saying, this situation is stressing me out or you're stressing me out. What you did stressed me out. If you want to escape that, try experimenting with substituting those words in your head for, I am allowing myself to be stressed out because of what you believe. I am allowing myself to be stressed right. out because of what you're doing or because of the situation, because that's what it is, right? Right. There's nobody on the planet, the greatest psychologist in the world, can deny the reality of that, that you cause your own stress by the way you look at things, by the way you choose, because it's always your choice. It's never right. not your choice to choose a thought about something. And the quality, right. the quality of your life and the quality of your experience in your career with other people and the evolution of your career and your ability to go deeper into your creative nature is absolutely joined at the hip with your releasing of stress. Awesome. Hey, Where did uh, that just come from? I don't even know how that I came think out. That was, that, was, that, was, <laughs> that was good, brother. That was a good one. I, I love have, that. <laughs> uh, I have to do an unforgivable thing and leave the bandstand because I have a, a 2 p.m. meeting I, I can't miss. But yeah, 2 p.m. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So Steve, this is awesome as usual. You know, you're you're your usual sharing brilliant <laughs> self and and uh, giving a lot of stuff for us to think about and hopefully better ourselves too. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast and you know I, I can't thank you enough for being just a groovy dude that you are so oh, thank, thank you michael well thank i'm you. staying to talk to steve so all right, all right. i'm doing <laughs> thank you michael all right, all right Mike, you rock, care, hey i i just wanted to shout out uh real quick um my friend oz fox from striper is oh out yeah yeah there. oz and Oz has been having some health concerns lately and i, I just know. wanted i actually to, uh, know yeah I, yeah I know that. Um, ask you guys to pray for him and and consider him in your thoughts and think good wishes towards 
Oz and his family right now. And um, he's a really good brother, a really good friend at Stripers, one of my favorite bands. And, um, you know, just had Michael on a few uh, episodes ago. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to say that. Um, and uh, so, Steve, I just I, I really think it's important, like what we're talking about, because like you said, everybody's afraid right now. People are afraid and they 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 don't know what they're going to do. You know, like what like what would you say to like musicians right now that, you know, their tours are canceled, all the places to close are closed that they play. They don't know where their revenue is coming from. They don't know if there's going to be any revenue in the future because everyone's going to be fighting for the gigs in the future, you know, the same gigs. So like all these places now, the calendar is just getting pushed out and the best, the top bands are going to get the gigs and like, what's going to happen? Well, I would say that there's no need to entertain these things uh, in your mind in a fearful way. Right. Uh, there are advantages that you can find in anything if you, if you decide to look for them. Um, it's going to work out. It's going to work out one way or another. And I would not be surprised if when this is all over and you look back at all those things that you were fearful of, that you see cooperative components come out of this situation. You, they are there absolutely unequivocally. You just have to look for them. Only you can do that. But it takes a mental, it takes the decision. I'm going to, I'm going to see how this can work for me. I'm going to see how this can serve me <clears throat> in all the things I do. If you, if that is your perspective, then you will, uh, you will no doubt find those things. You'll see them. So you have to be able to have a, you have to be able to see what your perspective is. You know, you have to be able to see, do I, and you'll know by the way you feel because your emotions are always going to tell you what the thoughts in your head are. So if you're entertaining fearful thoughts, you're going to feel that. And because so, so, you're going to. Well, no, I was just going to, so maybe this is a time to create. It's the a reality it's a time that for, you want, that you want to create. Yes. It, it was brought to you for a particular reason and you can find advantage in it. And many people are, many people are, are finding great advantage. My, my friend, Devin, Devin Townsend. Yeah. He, he had to cancel his tour. Did you see the little videos that he's making for everybody? Yeah. He's like doing music every day. It's yeah. so cool. It's they're fantastic. You know, I, I get to, I don't get to see his shows on tour. Really. I get to right. see his little gifts every day. So, yeah, yeah. you know, what looks like a bad thing, it was a, it was a good, is a good thing, you know, and it's really up to you to decide that the most, the most difficult thing to recognize is when you hear someone say these things that your mind says, yeah, nah, not, he, he's totally unrealistic. He's a total, um, uh, I don't know what, you know, uh, optimist. Uh, optimist. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm an optimist. I love right. being an optimist. Thank you very much. What's the, what's the alternative? <laughs> right. And, and, and now the, 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 the pessimist says, well, it's unrealistic, right? It's unrealistic to be optimistic. That's a form <laughs> of insanity to believe that because that, that comes from an, a, a pessimistic viewpoint, right? So you don't have access to any other thoughts, but negative thinking, negative thoughts. This is a trap. This is your prison. And you need to recognize it in order to break out of it. You have to recognize that you're doing it to yourself. Does this make sense? Yeah, man. It's, it's like, <laughs> you know, every, I think people just need to get some hope and courage instilled in them sometimes, you know? And I, I think what you're saying is really, really important and valuable in this time, you know, like it's not the time to shrink back. It's the time to take market share and ground for yourself, artists, like the opportunity to connect with people right now is greater than any period of time in the history of the universe, yeah, right? You literally, everyone is at home on the computer. Yeah, I know. Like I'm getting this, one of these a day to, are coming in. <laughs> right, right. And it's like, 
now is the time to 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 reach out to your people and talk to people and connect with each other spend time with your family get to know yourself ask yourself these hard questions that steve's talking about you know like like what what's really driving you right now is it fear is it courage like like where are you at you know start journaling get out a piece of paper yeah and just start writing your thoughts down and don't be critical of your thoughts don't be afraid of anybody reading it just write your thoughts down and then go back and, and read them again and the next day and be like, you know, hey, what what can I do to have a better thought day tomorrow? And it's not so much being critical. It's just adding elements to make your thinking work better for you yeah. as your friend, because the mind, the mind is the most powerful thing that we have. And it creates the reality that we experience. Mm -hmm. And it's like if you can master your mind you can be anything you want to be the human the human spirit it, it, like we're all just spirits and body cars here like we're 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 having this human experience but like we we can create and manifest anything that we desire if if we if we believe in it if we have faith yeah. in what we're what we're trying to do and the way you get that courage up that faith is to is to is to just write write about well this is what I do I, I write my biggest dream like get a piece of paper Grant Cardone talks about this he's a uh, he's a really cool uh, business guru guy and he wrote mm -hmm. a book called the, the 10x factor but uh, the 10x rule and it it's like he just writes his biggest dreams in his journal every single day yeah and every single night and he said after a while you start to see the same things coming back all the time because it changes a little bit every day. Like I'm going to be married to, you know, an attractive woman who's going to support me with my dreams and I'm going to be, a, you know, in charge of a billion dollars of real estate or whatever, whatever. I'm going to be a rock star playing in front of tens of thousands of people. Whatever it is, you can you can create that. You just have to believe that you can do it and then just do it in front of you. It's like it's kind of like a map. It's like you're planning the trip out. And, and, and then once you give yourself permission to just run as far and as fast as you can go, that's when the, the fear goes away, or at least that's what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah the most important thing uh, for all those things to happen is you have to be, uh, you have to, you have to be comfortable where you are now. You know, you right. have to, you have to feel, you know, it's very interesting. Um, it's, it's the manifestation. Right. Know? And, right. and many people believe that, uh, you know, I, I'm going to be, a, I want to be a billionaire. You, you know, the list on this side right. know, of the goals is right. pretty extraordinary stuff. I want to be a rock star. I want, you know, I'm yeah. just, I want to be respected and all these things. They may or may not happen. Right. But but the quality of your consciousness at the time that they happen is going to determine the quality of your life experience. You can be a billionaire and be very, very unhappy you, is, is, is whenever you're putting whenever you're putting your sense of security in anything in the outside world, you're building your um, uh, your what, what, you're building your house on sand, as they say, because. Everything's always changing. Even even billionaires are in fear of losing their money. Some, maybe not. Right. You know, yeah. you can never quantify the sense of happiness in another person based on their external surroundings. Uh, the, the, statistically, the happiest uh, countries in the world are the poorest. That was something I read. Um, right. So it's it's. It doesn't matter what you have. Do you know what I mean? Or what your goals are. Right. You, 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 your, your goal in all of it, if you were to break it down, if you were to say, well, why do you, why do you want to have a billion dollars? Well, I like the sense of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of security that it gives me. I want to be able to have anything I want whenever I want it. Okay, but mm -hmm. why do you want all the things you want whenever you want them? <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Well, because then I can, uh, you know, then I can uh, just do whatever I want. I can, I can have security, you know. 
I, I can be happy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's because that's later. Yeah. You want to I, be happy so what now. you're saying right. is when I get those things, then I can be happy. Right. But the 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 only time is now and the only time you can ever be happy is now your entire life is only ever unfolding now so when you're when you're finding things that you're enjoying right now you're you're having the things that you think you're going to have with all the dreams that you're you're, you're expecting and when you have that kind of satisfaction your ability to expand is exponential you may decide i I don't need a billion dollars, you know, I, I right. it, it, trust me, I, I, I'm not a billionaire, you know, I, I wouldn't mind it, but right. I, you, there, it comes with challenges, you know, it, it has its own limitations. Being famous has, its, has, has certain limitations. The ego, yeah. the ego loves it, you know, um, right. I'll give you a little antidote from my own, uh, my own career that might be helpful. Um, when I look back through my entire career, there was one thing that was constant since the beginning. And that was my enjoyment of playing the guitar and of mm -hmm. writing music. That when I was a kid uh, and I discovered the guitar and music, mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I need to, needed to make another decision about what I was going to do. I never made a decision. And... Um, that was the thing that brought me moment in instant gratification play just playing just enjoying playing the guitar i enjoyed it so much the, the for me the thing that was that excited me the most was when i came up with an idea for something mm -hmm. and i couldn't do it and then i worked on it and then all of a sudden i could do it that was like made every day like christmas you know and it, right. be it became addictive to the point right. where I was just practicing nonstop and it didn't feel like it was enough. There was, you know, when you're in that mode, when you're in that passion zone, time evaporates. And you, you know this because mm -hmm. like if you sit down and you're doing something and you yeah. two out three, four hours, five, six later, you pick up your head, you know. Right. So so that was my that was my main thing. As a matter of fact. The idea of being famous was a fantasy that I didn't, I hardly entertained on a realistic level. Mm -hmm. Like, I am going to be famous. I have no idea. That's the truth of it. You don't know. Right. So it's, it, you can, you know, you can kind of fantasize, but when your sense of fulfillment is based on a future fantasy, you're just fucked. Because even right. when you reach that goal, it only lasts a little while, you know, right. the, the, the feeling of, you know, cause then you're on to the next thing. So right. what I noticed about the way things evolved through my career, everything seemingly came to me, mm -hmm. you know, it came, it came to me. I never really, I, I mean, I did, I was reaching out for certain things, but for instance, The, the number one focus was just the enjoyment. As a matter of fact, I was uh, there was a period when I was younger that I was completely petrified of becoming famous. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody had said to me when I was a little boy, "People that become famous become go insane." <laughs> so you know, right. and when you're a little kid, you believe that. <laughs> right. Stuff, you know? right. So I st I start I was like, okay, I don't want that. I but I got this, and that's enough. You know, and. Um, Next thing you know, because I developed these skills out of passion for the instrument, Frank Zappa says, I want you to audition for the band. And I'm like, I didn't ask for that. <laughs> you know, you, right. you, don't, you don't ask for those things of someone like Zappa. Right, you know? sure. He, he saw something in me that he could use that, was, that came out of me because of my crazy passion for just playing the weird quirky mm -hmm. stuff that Steve Vai does, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then when, uh, you know, when uh, I think w w after that with Alcatraz, that was a gig that I actually reached out. You know, I said, Oh, right. this band Alcatraz, they had Ingbe, they, 
They're looking for a guitar player. Let me go check this out. Hang on one second. Yeah. Hello? Hi, come on in. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, so then, uh, <clears throat> but then with like Dave Roth, that that came as a phone call. I didn't look for that. White Snake, that that came crossroads. They, they, I, the phone rang. It was Ry Cooter. Wow. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, and these are like pivot, these are like uh, pivot points in my career that have yeah, seemed sure. to have been really, you know, and uh, something like uh, the Attitude song and Guitar Player, that little flexi disc way back in the day, that had a huge, huge, uh, created a momentum for me. I just sent the song in. I didn't request anything. And throughout my, my Ibanez, they came to me, you know, it's because it was just because my number one goal, it, it, it was just the love of the instrument. And then the consequence of your passion is the success of your passion. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. now that doesn't mean that my life hasn't been wrought with challenges. I've had right. many delusional egoic fantasies about other types of success. You know, right. uh, I'm going to write a, a, an opera that's going to change, you know, or I'm going to uh, be a real estate m m mogul, you know, and right, uh, sure. this investment is going to make me rich, you know, failed every time, every time. <laughs> every time but the things that came natural were perfect for me and i see them as perfect and they're happening to you they're right. happening to you right now and when you take your focus and you just give it in the beginning we were talking i was saying there's something that people do that they really enjoy and it could be something very simple it doesn't have it's not it's not necessarily a monumental thing it could be something as simple as sewing or, or mm -hmm. cre creating a little thing the, but when you're doing it with enjoyment that flows the, there's a quality that flows into what you're manifesting right and that that quality goes into the world and and your contribution is is very valuable then and it doesn't matter what it is so Here's a here's a little something that I could share since you were talking about making lists and stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this was a technique that I learned uh, that's kind of fun um, through Abraham Hicks, very powerful okay. teachings there. And uh, you create a list and you, you, you on one side you put uh, and I'm a list guy, you know, I, I, yeah. less yeah, and less yeah. these days, but you know, yeah. and you, uh, on, on the right, you put all those fantasies that you believe are what you are, what you want. Right. You know, and you kind of give them to the universe to deal with. <laughs> and on the left side, you put the things that uh, you know, you can do today, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the things that you enjoy doing, the things that the, 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 you can do that don't have the stress in it. You right. Know? And and focus on that and the rest will take care of itself beautifully. Right. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, You know, it's funny, like just just as a, a business thinking person, you should literally take I'm going to give you guys this uh, video after the after we get done talking. You should send this to a transcriber, get him to transcribe this whole conversation and strip all your stuff out of it and you can book. This is good, good information. Like I think people would really be blessed by this and just a thought, but I mean, it's, it's super helpful. And, I, and I'm gonna probably listen to this 20 times. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have my little, uh, I decided it was difficult for me to start expressing these things because I was fighting in my mind with uh, uh, sounding pretentious. You know what I mean? I know that's yeah. odd, but that was that was a no, while no. ago. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It was kind. Of, it was kind of a while ago. I don't care anymore because uh, I know that I've been seeing through the through the last four or five years um, very supportive comments um, when I when I do go off into these realms, and they've been valuable to me. And when you share these things, and somebody else finds value in them, it's great. And the way that you learn them is by sharing them. I know that sounds odd, but that 
because you're reinforcing them in your own mind. And when I when I look at something like so thankful they came to love you, my gem, Steve, when you got that, I mean, you know, I see these certain responses where people, you know, they're like, okay, I get that. That's good. So then that then I know that I'm making a connection and it's just as valuable to me in my education of it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's kind of like um, uh, Grant Cardone. He's kind of my current, you know, mentor that I'm I'm kind of tapping into, and um, he says that he doesn't write books for other people. He writes them to solve his own problems. So like he's he's kind of like he he he's just he's he he taps he learns it and then in teaching it and sharing it with other people, then everyone gives him feedback, and and then he tweaks it and then he writes another book you know, that's even better. Mm -hmm. And then I, and I think Ryan, uh, we, I just had him on the show with my, um, other co-host, uh, Yashi Brown, who's uh Reby Jackson's youngest daughter. And she, um, we, we had a great interview with Robert green, 48 laws of power. I don't know if you've read any of his stuff, mm -hmm. but yeah, he's uh he kind of writes about manipulation and seduction and he kind of reverse engineers it kind of like the dark Jedi version of like human nature but his books are really cool and he, he kind of explains like if you were going to be a manipulator this is how you would do it and he wrote it kind of in the first person dark jedi type way yeah. but like he's he's just a, a nerd that just kind of like he, he geeked out on the whole concept and just tried to figure it out but as he progressed and wrote books he came up with the law of human laws of human nature which is his, uh, one of his most recent books and it you could just see how he would write a book, people would give him grief over it, and then he would write another book. People would like, oh wow, that resonates with me. I don't like it, you know, that type of thing. And as you put yourself out into the world and you and you put your ideas out into the world, I think the world gives you feedback and it transforms you. You know, like yeah. I, I don't know. But let, go ahead, see. Yeah, no, absolutely. And based on the way you receive that feedback will be determined on how you change yourself. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's very difficult to be able to. Uh, I mean, uh, I, as I had mentioned, I started uh, these little webcasts. I do them Tuesdays at noon and Thursdays at noon. And yeah. Tuesday, I talk talk all about guitar and music. And on mm -hmm. Thursdays, that's called Alien Guitar Secrets Live. And then the right. one on thir Thursday is Under It All, where I kind of go more into this stuff. Right. And right. One of the, right. One of the. Uh, one of the. Uh, questions that came in that I'll probably address tomorrow is uh, how do you deal with criticism? You know, how, how do you how do you deal with criticism? And, and that's a good question, because the way you receive um, information about your work, it comes from different perspectives. You know, it, it, there's the People are see people will see your work differently. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. No one in the world will ever see what you do the same. <laughs> right. It's right. impossible. You know, it's everybody has their own perspective. They have right. their own. They have their own sense of reality. It's not true reality, but it's a form of pseudo reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, you know, this is very obvious when one person says, "I think that this thing should be this way," and the other person says, "I think no, I think you're wrong. I think they should be this way." Right. Okay. They they both have completely different perspectives, but this is the way it is for everything. So right. when you're receiving information from people based on their perspective, you have to be very vigilant in how you're responding, because if you're responding from let's say a criticism, mm -hmm. uh, you're not gonna get great value out of it. Right. You know? it, you, if you're taking anything personally, you're, you're not gonna be able to, in, in, uh, to get any value out of it, to use it to your advantage. Right. Now, so you have to be able to see when somebody's being critical based on their perspective, and if they don't like what you're doing, can you allow that? You know, can you be right. okay with that without being like, yeah, fine, but you suck, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> right. something like that, you know, because <laughs> right. this, this happens all the time. 
it, yeah. it happens for stupid things. Like if somebody was watching this, why is Vi wearing his own Vi hat? <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> you know? Right. Uh, uh, I could say, what, you don't like my hat? Right. You know, <laughs> but what I'm really saying, what I'm really saying is, why don't you like me? Right. You know what I mean? It's like people take things personally. It's a hat. Yeah. I, I pulled it out of my closet because I, I like the way it fits on my head. Right. The end, you know? <laughs> and, uh, right. But so you have to be careful when you're taking outside uh, criticism to not take it personally and to see the value in it. And this was been a struggle in, in my earlier years because, I mean, I, I went through a period of being highly criticized in the 90s when things changed and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and it was painful. And then I realized that the, the only thing that was suffering was my ego, you know? Right, uh, right. And then I would, uh, and there, critique can be very um, helpful. Mm -hmm. it, it, but it has to come from people that, um, that no, well, there's two kinds of criti cri critiques. There's the work, there's the, the realm of people that criticize what you do and say, well, that's not good because it's not Elton John or the Beatles. I'm just using music as an right. example. Sure. So then the, the weak mind says, well, then I need to do something that's more acceptable for those people and the right. world, which is right. Beatles types music or something right. like that. Right. And if you have a natural affinity for Beatle music, that's fantastic. Right. But if you're compromising your own creative integrity to fit in, you're missing out on the best part of life. Right. Yeah. So how do you know if that's what's happening? Like, like you know, because we check like the you way say you... it's a lie, and we get yeah, we get tricked sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's an inside job again. You have to find your equilibrium, and then you can feel the energy coming off of the what you're receiving. You'll see if it's somebody else's uh, dislike of you because they're not you, or they're not a they haven't accomplished what what you have accomplished, or they have accomplished so much more, and they're showing you, you know, and uh, or pointing out all your mistakes because they just don't like them. Or if what's coming at you is uh, coming from, if it's got teeth in it. Right. You know, if it's right. got teeth in it, chances are you're not going to get much value out of it except the recognition that that person is trapped in their own head. Right. But right. there are very many um, critiques that can be helpful. And I know in my career, I look for them sometimes. You know, if uh, there's certain people that I've come to trust when they review my music, if I release a record, because they, they know my career, they know uh, my music, they know my potential, they can feel when, it, when, when, when I've missed the mark on certain things, mm -hmm. and they can actually explain it in a credible way that I can... I can understand and I can say, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to look into that. You know, that's really different than, you know, you're an asshole. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm right. You're wrong. You know, the, so you got to be, uh, 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 you have to first find your center so that you can value or, or evaluate the criticism or the critiques that you're hearing. Right. And then and then you need to be able to see if it resonates with you, if there's value in it for you. How can this help me? Is what this person's saying because they know me and they they, you know, how can I improve me? Uh, how can I be better at expressing who I really am? And the answer to that is you first you gotta just be comfortable with who you are. You gotta be comfortable with your own quirky self. You know, you gotta be friendly with yourself. It's the same story. I say the well, same thing, just in different ways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and anyway, I, Steve, I, I really appreciate all this insight that you're sharing with everybody here at Kingdom of Rock. And there's a lot of musicians out here. I wanted to give a shout out to my friend, uh, Roddy Chong from Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Ah, uh, yeah. Hey, you, you were going to bring him on. I know I talk a lot. Uh, we, can no, talk cool. we can talk music if you like. <laughs> well, we can do that. Um, I was going to shift that. Um, 
there's a little bit, I'm, I'm going to ask you a, a, a question about um, if you could maybe elaborate a little bit about what you have going on musically. Um, you know, you talked about your broadcasts that you're doing, um, mm -hmm. you know, maybe kind of talk about that a little bit and uh, the, your projects. And um, I'm going to try to get, uh, get Roddy on if he's uh, available. And Roddy, you actually have the link, so you could just come on if you want. And I'll, I'll get you in here, but um, I'll send it to him. But so, so how are how are things going in the in the musical world of Steve Vai right now? What are you What are you up to? What are you doing? Things are going fantastic. I love my life. I love working. Uh, right now, I'm composing. Um, I know I should have a solo record out, a new one, <laughs> but uh, so many things i've been i've been plotting and planning my new record and it's probably at this point going to be the third installment of the real illusions trilogy so it's the concept record of sorts and it's uh, the way i'm looking at it right now it's probably going to be a very heavy vocal record uh, with a lot of a lot of vo voices um so that i've i've got i've got laid out i'm ready to dive into it i'm really excited to get into that it's very different than that. Well, I should say, very different. What's very different? You know, I mean, it's a little bit of a departure from my past records. But um, through the years, I've been compiling tremendous amounts of uh, manuscript, orchestral writing. It's a favorite pastime of mine, also. And uh, I uh, have decided. I've had this. I've had it pretty much all of it. Uh, performed at one time or another, but I decided that uh, I, I wasn't very happy with the recordings or the performances because it's very dense and tense music. So I decided to go into the studio to properly record these orchestras doing this music. And uh, that's scheduled for May. I think I might have mentioned this already. The last week of May uh, with the Metropole and then the uh, first two weeks of uh, June with the Aarhus Denmark Orchestra. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but um, preparing the music is incredibly time consuming and intense because I'm hearing stuff and getting rid of all the any little mistakes that happened along the way and reorchestrating various sections. And I, I really love doing it, um, but it's a, it's, a, it's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> Well, so you're 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 getting into orchestra work though now, right? Like you're you're trying to you're composing kind of like using all the instruments and like like what's the I, I heard something on your broadcast. You said that you were you were making like the whole big production. Yeah, are, are, is it without guitar at all? Uh, some of it's with it, 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 my orchestral music. Kind of breaks down into two two or three categories. One is basically orchestrations of uh, music from my catalog, which is, you know, has guitar. Uh, we've got on the schedule to be doing things like Call It Sleep and Racing the World and Valorum and uh, kind of like the, some, some heavy stuff and the whole Fire Garden suite um, for anybody that might know what any of that stuff is. But then there's a realm of orchestra music that I write that's more contemporary based that doesn't mm -hmm you know, doesn't usually require a rock band and it's pretty contemporary sounding. So this isn't something I started now though. It's, uh, I was doing this before I started playing the guitar. Um, I was 15, I think when I wrote my first orchestra score and it was only because I had a really fantastic music teacher in high school that taught me all about music. He taught me the compositional process and I just really, in, responded you know it, it, the idea of having a piece of paper with anywhere between 50 and 100 musicians on it and you can just write every little thing that they're supposed to play it's just like a i don't know it's a infinite potential it's for real freedom but as long as you know the language so uh through the years i've continued to compose and now i've just decided to get proper recordings of it all and then i'm uh working on a new live uh cd and dvd of the last north american generation acts tour and that's really i mean from who, who all was on that well it's, 
Generation X is, has been the same for uh, forever, for, for as long as we've been doing it. It's myself, Tosin Abasi, Nuno Betancourt, Zach Wild, and Ingve Malmsteen. And we, oh my gosh! Yeah, we've done two really great North American tours. We've done Asia twice, and now we're, um, uh, you know, I've, I've we recorded the American tour and filmed uh, the show in Austin, Texas, and I'm just kind of well. Greg is doing a lot of the legwork right now, just pulling it together and editing it. But that, after all this orchestra stuff, uh, I'll probably put the screws to that and then uh, finish my records. And then I'm gonna tour my ass off, man. I'm going out for, I'm gonna probably do 300 shows. Yeah. Nice. nice. <laughs> I'm gonna be at all of them too. Hey, how you doing, <laughs> man? Like, hey, hey, Steve. This is my friend, Roddy Chong. He's the, uh, the I get, the violinist is the right term, right? For Trans-Siberian Orchestra. That's right. Or string. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He's is like the- With Mark? Oh uh, well, Mark was the original guy, and uh, yeah, he was the original guy, yeah. And so, um, I've been there for 13 years now. Uh, nice. We typically rehearse in Council Bluffs, and I, uh, I only told one person. I snuck out the back door and 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 caught your show at the casino. It was the Horseshoe Casino in 2013, yeah. and yeah. and and it was awesome. Um, Thank you. Everyone out there, Steve I is is such an inspiration to all of us. Um, and I, I typed in the uh, <laughs> early on I, I, when he said how weird he is. I, I the first time I saw him was at House of Blues, and he had lasers coming out of every orifice in his eyeballs, and you know that's very weird. And, and we in the audience were like, "We love this weirdness. We love it. What is this?" Yes. <laughs> so great uh, to be here. And trust me, and, I was restrained by budget, but I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we need to give Steve I more budget. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do, do it. it. Let's fundraiser, people. All right, That's PayPal. Right. What's your PayPal, Steve? <laughs> coronavirus stuff. I want money. <laughs> exactly. Hey. And that's that's a good reason to have a, be a billionaire is to fund your tour, right? Right. Just drop a billion dollars. Could you imagine a tour where you dropped a billion dollars on a tour? Be that would be sweet. Britney Spears wouldn't stand a chance with her production. That's right. That's right. So well, it's so, nice to have you here, brother. Yes. Uh, you also I had a quick question. I, I did step away for a call. And um, so I'm not sure if you got to talk about some of your favorite teachers in the some of the philosophies that you've been sharing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Steve. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's changed through the years because you're always changing. So what you're going to attract in the form of that kind of teaching and any kind of teaching is going to change. But in the early days, uh, in the like 1980, it started in 1980. I was very much into metaphysics, you know, spirituality, new age kind of thing. So I got very into um, things like astral projection and pyramids and numerology and all these kinds of things. Uh, but kind of passed by that. And then I started getting into more Eastern philosophies and uh, meditation became a very center theme in what I was doing and diet and, you know, this kind of thing. Hmm. And then um, I saw really powerful changes in my, my life. And I realized I, I was always kind of like a seeker after truth, so to speak. And um, I just never let up. Nothing was ever good enough. And until I found what I was looking for. And that started to happen probably about 12 years ago. And it was kicked off by my introduction to the teachings of Eckhart Tolle. And before that, I had read numerous things. Didn't, I, I mean, didn't really understand them, sort of, you know. Um, and uh, there was a, an Eastern philosophy that I embraced very heavily that was and I, I still do to many, uh, you know, uh, and, and it's been very helpful for me. But uh, I can't remember. One of the books that was in the early days that was very helpful was uh, The Complete Illustrated Book of Yoga, Yoga by Vishnu Devananda. Very powerful. And that's when I first started to experience um, the value of... And back then, yoga was different than it is today. You know, yoga was more of a 
um, it incorporated the mental perspectives, meditation, things like uh, diet, and of course the stretching and everything that's become so popular today. And uh, I, I went through a pretty big change. Um, I needed to because I was not in a good place. And then all sorts of uh, writings and, and books, I can't really remember, but I'll get to the good ones that have been very helpful. Anything by Krishnamurti, I mean, and or Eckhart Tolle, or um, I'm very into Abraham Hicks these days, or you know more more in the past, but very powerful, positive stuff. Uh, there's one book that I think is an incredible phenomenon that I've read probably 15 times, and it's this thick, and it's called A Course in Miracles. Mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no way for me to really explain it except that it's aimed at the complete reversal of the way that we think. Awesome. Yeah, and and it was it's incredible. It was incredibly helpful, incredibly wow. uh, uh, eye opening. Uh, but that was my path, you know. I, I, I'm a firm believer that everybody is is exactly where they need to be, and whether they're a Christian or they're following Judaism or metaphysics or anything and wherever they are within those things because you could take something like christianity there's huge there's everything from uh, you know people that uh, are completely uh, in a state of fear and deluded and uh, to people that are trying to find the truth of who they are and it's in there it's based on how you look at it mm -hmm. um so there's nobody's making a mistake. Everybody's okay, wow. you know, and that and they're fine. It's so important to know that because when you know that where you are right now, and and you might be a person that has no desire or understanding for even the word spirituality, that's fine too. You're still on a spiritual path. <laughs> so Matt, can I ask Steve a quick question? And I don't want to hijack your show no. here. No, dude, I've I've been talking to Steve for an hour and a half. We're good. Yeah, like, and I, I should probably go pretty soon. So and he's got to go. Yeah, we got okay, to let real, him go Really eat. quick, um, uh -huh. just in a practical sense, um, hypothetically, let's say somebody has maybe uh, $40,000 in debt, um, student debt, and then maybe $40,000 in debt with credit card debt. And, you know, they're, they're wanting to make some decisions about uh, – going on a trip to Vegas or something when this all blows over. Um, and you're saying, hey, you are fine where you are at. I can kind of feel what you're saying, but in that hypothetical situation, um, are they fine or, because I was just wondering, if, do, they, yeah, do they, need, was, they, they need to make a change or? I was referring to uh, various spiritual paths you know, uh, basically, where you're at is where you're where you're is w based on what you're able to understand. So you're finding the right paths. But in regard to something like what you just mentioned, a scenario like that, you're still fine. You're still doing really well, even though the externals may look challenging. If you, if you eliminate those externals from your mind, if you eliminate for just for one moment, and this is vital that you do this, because if you want proper, powerful solutions for those things, to get yourself out of debt, to get back to your thriving self, you, you have to uh, find moments of peace. You have to find moments of escape from these things things in your mind. So for instance, you're in debt a million dollars. You're sick. You have a terrible disease. Your loved one of your children is sick. You know what I mean? You can make the scenario much worse, much worse than being in debt $80,000. Um, still, even then, you deserve to give yourself a break. And what that means is, yes, you're not denying that there's things happening that are challenging. You don't deny these things. 
that's that's another that that's denial it doesn't get you anywhere you know you need to accept that they're actually happening because they are they things things are happening and and uh, there's the practical uh, reasonable uh, reality is this is a situation but even then it's important to take a moment and move like okay here's let's just say this is the thinking mind and it's it's doing things like what am i going to do right. about this i might even die what about the, the what about my family then what's going to happen to my finances and my career how am i going to get out of this debt i'll never get out of this debt i and then that the more the more you stay there yeah it just keeps it it builds the yeah. it builds at you because you're adding to the to the commentary and it's going in the direction that you're heading so if you're heading in a fearful fearful direction you will compound the psychological story about your situation and you're and you're seeing it the way you're seeing it you know the way you believe it is which is just you're seeing it through a screen you know so they it will always lead to more you will always increase the story to things like i better plan my own death now i better i better i better be prepared for you know what i mean and uh, crazy things you know, all sorts of things now this creates a vibration in you it's obvious mm -hmm. thoughts you're thinking create the way you feel your emotions. Your emotions are actually an indicator of what you're thinking. Mm. You know, it's not the other way around. So when you take a moment, now one one technique to help get you out of a situation like that is to look at the situation and soften it in your own mind. Find words that you can say and in your mind and align with. You got to be able to actually align with the words that you're telling yourself, you know? Okay, this is the situation as it is now. Uh, you know, there's things that you can you can say to bring you back down. Uh, things are always changing. I don't know what this means. I don't know what this debt means. You know, in reality, I know I'm, I'll have to pay it off somehow, but I'm certainly glad that I got the education that I got for that $30,000. That was well spent money. That's another perspective that can also be true. And it changes your vibration, which then changes your ability to find solutions. That's awesome. Right. Oh, so fucking easy. I, I heard. It's hard, but it's hard because when you're in it, you're just like, nope, this is the way it is. And it sucks. My, so you my, gotta, sorry, go ahead. I, no, I was just going to say my pastor used to say, don't let what you don't know keep you from doing what you do know. Ah, very you know, nice. it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like, like we, we fear is, me, oh man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And it's like, well, what do you know works? What do you know about yourself that makes you, brings you joy and happiness and peace? And like, just what are you thankful for? That. Yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah. That. Yeah, exactly. It's like that's how you take control of your fear. It's almost like reprogramming your own mind by yeah. the words, the words that you speak. Yeah, and you, you, words, words are the most powerful. I mean, it's like magic. You yeah, know, it's, like, not, it's not the words as much as it is the alignment that you have with the words inside of yourself. It's the right. it's, it's the feeling that's of of profound value. Because you know, words come out of people's mouths, and many times they don't mean what they're feeling. They're right. more, of a, more of a defense or something like that. But I want to get to this one point, and then I'm going to let you guys go. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to show you the evidence of the reason why, no matter what situation you're in, you're doing fine. Okay. So okay. now let's say you're in this situation, much worse than, much more challenging than even owing $60,000. Right. So one technique is changing the story in your head, right? That, uh, to other things that are also true. So you're not making stuff up that's outlandish and fantasy. Like I don't, I don't, you know, be, being able to say, I don't know why I'm in debt right now for this. I don't know what this means. I know that there's ways. 
I know that there's ways to make not just $60,000, but a lot more. You have to even be able to go there because that's just true. You could, you, you have no idea. There's infinite ways. There's oceans of money to be made if that's right. what you want, you know, right. if that's what, you, you know, so that's, that's also true. You see what I mean? So this is another way to either circumnavigate a situation or help fix it or bring it to a higher solutionary uh, to be to, you need to be more solution based oriented and the only way to do that is to look at the situation differently so that's one way and that changes the situation for you so it changes your ability to find various solutions but even a more powerful way if you just cannot find a way to get out of the mental suffering of the challenges. There's one surefire way that will do it all the time. It's the most powerful thing you can ever do. And it's finding the present moment. Because like, for instance, like right now, let's just say hypothetically, I had all those, I had tremendous amounts of problems or maybe even not hypothetically. Well, it would, it's all hypothetic because the problems are just thoughts. So right. anyway, so you take a moment and you say, I'm going to give myself a little break. I deserve it just for a moment. And I'm going to stop thinking and I'm just going to be present and I'm going to take my attention and I'm going to put it in the world around me right now without any thought without any judging of what's happening in my life, without any fear of what the future is going to bring, because there's no future in the present moment. There's only the present moment. And no lamenting of the past, because those are all thoughts. Remember, the past and the future are just thoughts in your head. That's the only place they, that the past and the future exist mm -hmm. in reality is in the thoughts of humans. So, when you give yourself a break from that for just a moment and you just become aware of the present moment, even if you're sick, it's, it could be a little, it could be more challenging if you're suffering from physical pain, but it's the psychological suffering that you're eliminating. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, there's something very amazing that you discover. What you discover is everything's all right. Everything's actually fine right now there's not there's not a problem happening right now you know and i'm actually doing pretty good you're aware you know so yeah. you'll never be able to escape the reality that you're doing really well but it's just a challenge to recognize it thank you that's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> All gonna, right. Well, I'm going to close this down. Thank you so much for coming on. And everybody, uh, share this with your friends. Give them some encouragement. Tell them how awesome this was. It's. I think it was. it's a privilege that Steve was here and shared all this amazing insight with us. Um, Steve, you, you're welcome on the show anytime. And thank you, uh, thank you for coming on Kingdom of Rock, brother. Thank you. What, what were the, are you. Are you in the band with Joel? Joel and I, yeah, Joel told oh, me, Joel, Joel so said, I love you that know, guy. Steve just texted me and, and he saw this solo I did and you, you, you lifted his spirit and then you lifted all of us in the locker room that, that you encouraged uh, Joel and oh, you've, in, you've encouraged and inspired hundreds of people here today at the Kingdom of Rock podcast. So Steve, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, I wish everybody the best. And thank you for allowing me to do this. I appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Okay, cheers. All right.